Chaya. Yeah. Uh, what a great day. It was a beautiful day. What is what was your perspective? I want to hear from you. Like uh, you've been working on this for such a long time. It was like a dream come true. And uh, one of the flagship events for BMA. And what a wonderfully delivered, uh, complete program, I would say. What is your views for today? My views first on why it was delivered so well. Mm -hmm. So it was a uh, lot of guidance and mentorship from IMA. Yeah. A lot of support from my EC members mm -hmm. and a tireless toil from my secretariat. Mm -hmm. So my guidance, my leadership stood no chance if there was nobody to execute it. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was part of it also. I soiled my hands too, but that's okay. But still, everybody, everybody did his job and therefore it was delivered so well. Wonderful. And we also had a wonderful lineup of speakers today. Yes. Like I think 20 speakers and yeah. all from uh, top leadership positions yes. who actually made time, flew in from Delhi and different cities, mm -hmm. coming here, being here today yeah. and shared their experiences, insights. Yes. How did you make that happen? So uh, it was again, as I'll say, it was IMA's support mm -hmm. because uh, in Delhi, IMA has a very strong presence. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, as uh, as it so happens in every conference, you know, towards the last day, many people start dropping out. Right. So that happened here too. Yeah. And at that juncture, we plugged in people from our own Amchi Mumbai. Okay. Which is where we have a good presence. Sure. And so it's so uh, nice to know. Yeah. So yeah, there are so many great people available. Yeah. And one, you know, there is one important lesson that I have learned through, through all these activities, and that is everybody is actually very happy yeah. to take out time for a good cause. A it's truly wonderful. successful person will always find time for a good cause. Yeah. And I have never got to hear no from somebody if I approached. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, the person is going to be out of town that day or he has some commitment from which he can't back out. Yeah. But I've never got to hear no from anybody ever because they do realize that all of us are also working in BMA mm -hmm. for a, for a worthy purpose. Yep. Right? We take, they're all in that higher uh, place of Maslow's hierarchy mm -hmm. where self-actualization and giving back matters a That's lot. A lot. Yeah. And so it happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, has, it has not just happened to me. It can happen to everyone. Amazing. What is that one message that you would like to give for our BMA, BMA members specifically? To Being be there president. for us, mm -hmm. to be there for us, mm -hmm. to support us and encourage us mm -hmm. when we try to put in something so nice together. Yeah. And um, take as much benefit from it as possible because it is basically being done to benefit everyone. So they should do that and they should get more active with BMA. And they should just uh, give us their unstinted support. What else can I ask for? Oh, amazing. And one last question. Hmm? You had, uh, I mean, I heard and I've been part of this as well, hmm? like the women power. Consciously <laughs> happened, I know. Hmm. But uh, what are your comments? So, uh, first of all, let me say that that uh, comment is uh, made in a jest. Yeah. Because if we are discussing digital, if we are discussing technology, mm -hmm. then technology is the greatest enabler uh, of uh, these times. Right. And technology is gender agnostic. Yep. Absolutely. Right? Yep. So just to say that it was said in a jest is good enough because in our committee and in our team, there were so many, our counterparts also, who were yep. male. Yep. And they have helped us and they have supported us equally. So it's just an adjust and it's okay, I think, because our girls in secretariat, yeah. they're young, yeah. they deserve encouragement and yeah. they deserve appreciation. So this was just one phrase in which they were appreciated. Amazing. Wonderful. Yeah. Nice uh, talking to you, Chaya. Thank you. And have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kutloskar, for uh, gracing us today with your presence. Uh, we are curious to know what is your take on today's uh, Digital Leadership Summit organized by IMA and BMA. Well, it's a great pleasure for me to be here uh, with uh, BMA today. Um, actually, the whole world is changing and I'm very happy that uh, BMA is conducting, uh, I think, a full day program on uh, digital. Uh, I run a company which is uh, 100 years old this year and the changes that are taking place uh, in manufacturing are really something to see. So we are lucky that uh, we operate across the globe and therefore we are aware of what happens uh, in the digital space. And uh, I think uh, 
all business models will change uh, in the new uh, age. And uh, there are going to be a lot of demands on uh, leadership uh, because they're the ones who sit at the top of organizations and uh, they can see what's happening elsewhere. And they have to make sure that everyone works together. Uh, companies work as, as networks uh, rather than the silos that you had earlier. Because uh, digital allows you to centralize information and it allows you to um, take quick action. And you spoke about how uh, leaders will have to adapt to this change. And as a uh, leader, uh, what do you think uh, differentiates uh, those leaders who are able to perform and uh, flourish in this new age versus those who are finding it difficult? It's the same as in any other age. <laughs> the leaders who can perform will take their companies ahead or their businesses ahead. And uh, the ones who cannot, uh, you won't see their companies. But it's, it's going to happen far quicker mm -hmm. right nowadays. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, being part of uh, BMA as a chairperson, it's been an exciting journey. Uh, it's been almost close to eight, eight, nine months as part of this role. Uh, this is our uh, flagship event, Digital Leadership Summit uh, 2019. The version 3, 3.0, is uh, uh, one of the most, I would say, um, sought after a flagship event that we really actually enjoy doing it. Um, not only us, but also we had the speakers, eminent speakers who actually were part of today's event, also shared some of the most interesting insights and I would encourage all of you to uh, please take a look at our social media sites or uh, YouTube channel to follow and also look at how the event had uh, delivered some of the key insights. Um, some of the key insights have been in terms of how digital has disrupted so many different industries, uh, how data has actually not bursted in a uh, negative way but actually has um, been the predictive model for many industries to uh, come by or who are relying on. Thirdly, how customer experience and customer journey can become the most forefront uh, initiative for any of the businesses. So, so combining all of these um, key, uh, key discussion points for different industries, imagine speakers sitting from educational institutions, banks, uh, manufacturing industries, to uh, small medium businesses, all giving such kind of great insights was an enjoyable uh, event today. It's an eventful day. Um, I, I'm uh, absolutely delighted to be part of this uh, wonderful today. Thank you. On today's summit, I love the title, Winning in a Digital Age. And I love the points that were made as part of it, which is to win doesn't mean someone else has to lose. To win will mean that we will build partnerships with many others to build an ecosystem and platforms which allow everyone to thrive. So I think the theme is wonderful. And I hope everybody will embrace the theme and the various subjects that are the agenda topics that were shown to me in the agenda. It is a core issue. My earnest plea for everyone always is not to think about it as a black box. It's not that hard to understand. It sounds very complicated, but it's not. One day writing code will be like writing English. All of us will be able to do it naturally and intuitively. It's a bit like you use your iPhone and other phones. You don't need an instruction booklet anymore. All of these elements will go in that way because as they get smarter, they will become simpler to use. And I think if we can grab that and think about it without feeling threatened, if this conference can help achieve that, I think it'll be a marvelous movement. Thank you. Place to start. So, uh, thank you for being at the summit today. Uh, what do you think uh, people should take away from what they have heard today? People should get ready for the new world that is emerging. The convergence of technology is changing things so fast that the world as we know it will disappear in the next six months. And so the biggest thing people need to take away 
is to be one step ahead, plan their own lives, change themselves, change mindsets, change attitudes to make sure that they're ready for the new world. So, exponential technologies have the single most important characteristic of being adopted much faster than ever before. So, just a few years ago, we could not have imagined that the entire railway ticket booking would be online. Today, that's the reality. Every travel agent in the world is gone. There's nobody issuing tickets in the physical form. Very soon, the physical ticket will vanish. And so, the progress of these exponential technologies is so rapid that we need to make sure that we can adopt it faster. The challenge is going to be to compress the time faster, more fully, and democratize the availability. The way I see it is that the costs of these technologies will fall so dramatically that it will become a completely costless world and therefore democratized, valuable, useful, and also sustainable. So that's the message that needs to go out so that people feel that they should look forward to that kind of development. So today, one, when one hears the word disruption, it's usually the connotation is that somebody is taking away your share of the market. But it's not really so. Today, it's actually about working with your competitors, working with other players and other stakeholders to build a viable business for yourself and for others too. And this is what the State Bank of India is doing. We are partnering across the entire ecosystem with a lot of fintechs, with other companies and building a platform which will provide our customer everything he needs, not only banking requirements, but also for whatever he needs for doing his investments, for, uh, for his insurance requirements. But beyond that, we have gone and also built an online marketplace where our customer can actually uh, shop and book an order for almost everything he needs. The best thing that a bank can do is not wait for disruption to happen, but to preempt it. Okay? And I just like to quote an example of something that we have done. So, what we have done is uh, we have released our, we have developed a product which actually does away with the requirement for a plastic card. So, today our customer, if he's on Yono, does not require a debit card to withdraw cash from an ATM. You can just raise your requirement on the app itself. You get a short code, which you can use at an ATM to withdraw cash without any risk of, uh, uh, of losing your card or card details through any things, uh, things like skimming or cloning, etc. I'm really impressed by the, uh, the speakers that I heard, and it's a great event. I wish the Bombay Management Association and IMA every success. Thank you very much, Mohit, for uh, speaking today at the Digital Leadership Summit. Uh, I wonder what your take is on the summit and uh, on digital leadership. Well, I, I think the, the summit is always, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the time to meet a lot of people. It's, uh, and uh, there's lots of things going on in our industry, so it's, 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 a, it's, it's a place to reflect. And, uh, and I think the, the fact that it is a summit on digital leadership, that's a that subject very close to my heart. And uh, so that is, uh, you know, is the future, really. You just spoke a little bit about that. So I think, uh, yeah, uh, cheers in both of, them, both of the things. Uh, you spoke about data and the predictive power of data. And uh, there were other speakers as well who spoke about how uh, the uh, lower cost of data and the proliferation of data in India is changing the way Indians interact with the world. Uh, can you share more, more with us about that? So what's happened in India is actually uh, is unimaginable. I mean, uh, we're a country where we had 
just 25 million people in that range, you know, using one GB of data in a month uh, to a country where there are 400 million people now who are using one GB data a day. In fact, uh, the average is a more of 10, 11 uh, GBs a month. Now that uh, so, there is so much of data now coming coming up, uh, and uh, there is so much of better understanding of India and uh, and about people, about what so uh, what they are you know watching on the content side and you know what's happening on the connect side and what's uh, there's a lot of commerce data now coming in as well and uh, uh, you know so and of course data is around community uh, so uh, all this data is going to visualize uh, 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 you know uh, a lot of things which is going to help India uh, cut out all the inefficiencies and uh, uh, and it's going to increase productivity which India has been seeking uh, uh, for quite some time. So I think it's, it's great times ahead, and uh, and data is going to be uh, is, is data is actually a, a, a is a uh, is a tremendous leveler, right? So there is because access to data is the same. It doesn't matter the person comes from a tier two, tier three, or a tier one, right? Uh, so so it's a great leveler, and uh, so great times ahead for India actually. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, today, like as you are uh, being partnering with the BMA. I would like you to talk about uh, your partnership with BMA and mm. also looking at uh, how, as your as a business executive, how are you ensuring that your customers are getting personalized services through digital? Mm. I think firstly, with our partnership with BMA, it's, it's good to be here as a digital partner for the event. Uh, we're more than happy to support all these initiatives because eventually it's it's about you know empowering more people to understand the topics better, the subjects better, and I think being digital experts in our own domain is great to share as much as we can. And yeah, again partnering with uh, people like you guys to actually create an experience for the consumers out there. Um, and coming to the personalization aspect of it, I think it's important that you know, with digital today, the amount of data we can capture uh, and really understand the segmentation of our audiences um, to tailor make communication to exactly what the consumer wants to listen to. Um, that, that, that aspect of personalization really is what digital can really harness today uh, as compared to the other mediums of advertising or marketing. Uh, so I think you know, if we can understand the data better, understand the consumer better, and really get into the psyche of their interests and their behavior to actually show them exactly what they want to see. That's where the platform becomes effective uh, and really gives a bang for the buck for the clients you work with. So that's the power that we try to harness you know, to the platforms we work on. Thank you. One more question. Yeah. Um, what, what, do you, what is your view about today's event? I think today's event was really well uh, structured. Uh, it, it's, it's been quite insightful because there are many industry stalwarts who are sharing a lot of different perspectives on the different topics. Um, I think it's great that digital is being given this platform among a new subset of people to really understand how the, the power can be harnessed better across uh, different things that we can do. So I think it's great that you know, something like this actually happened today and it's structured in a very good format that we really understand data first and get into content, into personalization. So, uh, in that sense, you sort of leave a little more holistic about the entire platform as a whole. So I think it's a great, great place to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, Faisal. Uh, it was great to see how you stole the thunder in the session. And um, what, what is, what is the, what is your view around uh, disrupting industries today? I mean, digital disruption that's happening within the industries. And uh, what is your view on who's going to win? and who's going to be like disrupted the most if they don't take any uh, action on it? Thank you. Um, that is a very pertinent question. I think we have to look from a uh, from a historical perspective, you know, historically, if companies that have evolved with times, uh, they're the ones who have always won the race. Uh, not necessarily the companies who are fastest to to innovate or the fastest to or the first to to change. But I think it has to be all encompassing. Uh, the second point I would like to add is companies have to become more and more consumer focused, which means truly uh, treat the consumers as the king. You know, in the historical uh, perspective, we have to understand that cons customers are the ultimate people who spend money and they buy our services, our products, etc. So digital is just is just a medium that we need to reach out and they can reach back to us. But behind that is the core strategy, and that strategy should be that to always respect and love our customers and delight them. Thank you. And uh, if you look at what is the future of, uh, like what are the 
what is the future of this disruption? Is there like uh, a backing up? We talk about data, we talk about consumer behavior, uh, so many things. But what is the future in terms of taking all these into the next level? This is, this is just the beginning. I think what we are seeing right now is the tip of the iceberg. I think over the next 10, 20, 50, 25 years, we will see a huge growth. Uh, we will see multiple new technologies coming up. Some of them are very uh, in, you know, in, in infantile stage right now. For example, machine learning, artificial intelligence. I think it's not the technology that should confound us. I think what should confound is the strategy. And the strategy is, are you on the winning side or are you on the status quo side? And my, my plea to everybody who's looking to disrupt or innovate or invent their business with a new modern uh, style is to always keep adopting and keep evolving. Uh, not necessarily, as I said, um, with the greatest speed or being the first, but definitely uh, innovating um, by looking at where the consumers are, where the customers are, and reaching out to those people in every form and manner. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. First of all, uh, I would like to thank BMA and IMA for, for this opportunity. And I think this is a phenomenal platform to get uh, uh, industry expert across various domains and share their knowledges. And I'm sure the, the, the participant would have had lots of uh, learning from this uh, session. Uh, one of the key things, at least I can talk about from my area to which I would want the, the listeners to do is to, to uh, ensure in their respective business domains, whichever domains they may be, they have to be future ready from the digital uh, offerings to their customers. So it's important for them to, to kind of be digital ready, uh, for them to be relevant in the uh, coming era. Uh, how are you uh, approaching the uh, Indian consumer who, uh, as you said in the uh, session downstairs, not be completely ready, uh, ready for a virtual experience. So, uh, as, as I said, uh, uh, particularly in the banking side, uh, Indian customers would want to continue to be digital. There are a set of customers who have money, who are transitioning uh, from, from, from physical to digital, they will continue to be uh, digital. Uh, so, banks have to be ready from the uh, from physical and digital perspective. At the same time, the next generation who will be mostly digital on that, so bank has to be ensuring that they are ready from digital perspective to service them. So it's important that a bank is, is ready from both physical as well as digital perspective ready to service both uh, segment of the customers. Thank you. So uh, you've seen the conference here today. Uh, how did you find the conference and what do you think delegates should take home from it? Uh, I think conference is really, really interesting. I think the topics are, that we have picked up are really uh, that the topics where we need to focus in this time, especially tech disruption and, you know, keeping sustainability at the core of it. And, uh, and the amount of experience that was in the room was amazing and it was great to meet uh, amazing people who are so focused about tech disruption and consumer experience. And uh, lots of... Uh Startups would be wondering what is it that makes uh, some startups succeed so spectacularly, while many others don't. And uh, we would love to hear from you what you think uh, worked mm -hmm. for you. Uh, I think there are, I mean, different startups are in different domains. There are different circumstances, different uh, 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 industries have which have different challenges and problems. But I think what worked for us that we have been able to create a pool of talent which is like-minded and people who are so passionate to solve the problems and to focus on the mission of providing quality, li quality living spaces to everyone across the globe. So I think that's what has been at core of what we do every day. Sound, action, rolling. So uh, we are curious what you think is uh, the key aspects which make uh, Certain companies succeed in today's digital 
according to me i think uh, the key aspects which uh, certain companies uh, succeed especially in the digital era uh, especially because uh, they are uh, uh, nimble uh, they are swift they are agile uh, they are hands on they are they are action uh, they have, there is a new culture which is em emerging uh, in, uh, in today's uh, digital era and companies uh, which are we have been running traditionally and if they want to uh, succeed in this uh, digital era they should be actually changing uh, the cultures within the organization that is the key if, if once the culture changes everything would uh, would change and one last question uh, when you uh, help uh, organizations to go digital uh, do you see a difference of how uh, institutions such as governments or municipalities approach digital what excites them most about the digital revolution uh, i think the government is changing uh, with uh, the new government has taken over over the last uh, uh, last uh, five years and the, and the the sixth one year is is going off the same government i think there is a significant change the approach of towards uh, digitization as uh, is actually changed uh, it is pro digital kind of thing and i think they are they are doing that uh, taking the night steps overhead so uh, in fact uh, I, i would like to quote one of my cases wherein uh, we had worked with uh, uh, one of the state government uh, police authorities uh, where we have developed an application uh, which is a citizen engagement tool uh, uh, which captures uh, the voice relations of traffic police and which has been accepted uh, by the traffic and now it has become a part of uh, a legal system altogether in the state Thanks. so you've been here today for the summit uh, how are you finding the conference and how do you think the delegates are um, it's been a great event organized by uh, the bombay management association and all india management association i think uh, i've been here uh, since morning and heard like a galaxy of speakers speak uh, about different areas of business disruption about uh, you know data and how that's becoming a very big part of uh, how businesses are going forward how digital marketing itself is becoming like uh, uh, the key sales channel going ahead for certain industries and um, i think it's 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 been like uh, a huge number of thoughts and ideas that i am taking back with me today and um, i think uh, i wish the regional management conclave all the very best and i hope it comes back bigger and uh, you know with many more tricks up their sleeve next year so all the best to all of you uh, why do you help various uh, businesses uh, in going digital or help digital businesses what has been your experience about what kind of leadership at the top helps businesses to succeed so this is this is a subject which i think is very close to my heart because um, while uh, everybody speaks about using digital to be disruptive to change their business uh, system to change their strategic intent and so on i find that um, there is a little bit of slip between the cup and the lip sometimes that does end up happening so certain organizations at the leadership level at the top actually are very committed to being disruptive to adopting technology to kind of uh, rolling it out in a very big way this actually translates very well up to the next level which is the functional heads which uh, you know have to drive it thereafter and this is actually the difference between a successful and a not so successful roll out of uh, a digitally disruptive process it has to flow down the line sometimes it's flowing down the line to every level is something which becomes a very big challenge so unfortunately transformation particularly digital transformation traditionally sometimes people like to park at the at the door of the it head you know yeah it ka problem hai send it to him let him figure it out but unfortunately that's not how it is going to be working any longer you know because we are working with smaller and smaller business cycles and unless um, digital becomes a 360 degree and co owned uh, function by everyone whether it is tech whether it is operations whether it is finance whether it is hr because people culture everything has to reflect that it's not going to actually fly and it's not going to be a successful sort of uh, effort at at moving a business ahead so until that is successfully accepted and adopted across the level and you're right it has to be um it has to be administered from the top from a leadership level but uh, 
to be successful it has to be felt at every level of the organization and now it's not only internal because there are multiple external stakeholders as well that you carry in every business so until that is done i don't see the organization really being truly digital going forward